Hello, everybody. Welcome to the library at the Cooper Union. Uh, welcome on Zoom. Uh, my name is Michael Young. I'm an associate professor here at the Cooper Union in the Erwin S. Chainin School of Architecture. Thrilled tonight to be able to welcome Dong Wu Yim from Proud Architecture. Uh, tonight, Dong Wu will be introducing his work in a new book that he has just published. But just a few words to introduce Dong Wu uh, to everyone and to everyone online. Dongwu Yim with Raphael Luna is the co-founder of Proud, based in Boston and Seoul, an architecture firm which is both a research practice and a practice committed to building with a number of uh, fascinating domestic and civic projects that are underway and completed in recent years. He's also an assistant professor at the Hongik University Graduate School of Architecture and Urban Design. He's the author of North Korean Atlas in I Want to Be Metropolitan, his works have been exhibited at the Venice Biennale, the Museum of Modern Art, and DNA in Berlin. He was a curator at the 2017 Seoul Biennial. And the book that we're celebrating tonight and Dong Wu will introduce us to is titled A Language of Contemporary Architecture, an Index of Topology and Typology. And also just to say uh, a few words, Dong Wu and Proud and in my practice of Young and Ayata, have been collaborating on a project over the past year, and it's been a kind of wonderful experience to be able to work with an architect, a thinker, an educator, and uh, a collaboration across uh, time zones, across countries, and across everything else that it means to practice architecture today in our contemporary world. Um, many thanks to Dean Haley Eber, Mauricio Higuera, everybody working in the AV and IT, putting this all together and putting it up on Zoom. And without any other further ado, uh, please join me in welcoming Dong Wu Yim. Uh, if I may, can I just uh, sit here? And then. Uh, Thank you, thank you, Michael, for for the great introduction. It seems like uh, I'm uh, I'm bigger than who I am, actually. <laughs> but yeah, um, Michael uh, Young and I are proud are are, are collaborating on a, a project uh, together uh, in the past year, uh, and probably uh, will be done in in a couple of years. Uh, uh, for the construction, and uh, one of the reasons why why I thought uh, their their project uh, that they won the competition and the, the project they won was great was something that really relates to the th the thoughts that we had uh, as our own practice. So that's why I really wanted to. Uh, work uh, work on that project, and then, um, and that's something that probably we can open up a discussion with uh, Young and I and Michael Young. Uh, basically, uh, this is a, a school setting, so it's, uh, I wanted to share some ideas as well as uh, share my questions uh, that I don't really have an answer to, but something that that we all can uh, question in in architecture. So, of course, the question is what remains after all. Uh, as uh, Michael mentioned, uh, uh, this whole lecture is uh, based on the 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 research publication that that we recently published, uh, "Language of Contemporary Architecture: An Index of Topology and Typology." Uh, the 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 title sounds very very how to say uh, very ultimate and <laughs> something that trying to to define contemporary architecture, but uh, not really. I mean, I mean, we don't dare to define uh, contemporary architecture, but something that that uh, as a young practitioner, I'm still young, a uh, young practitioner, uh, uh, this is some kind of a question that we always had uh, ever since we first formed the, the company. And uh, the question was, uh, what is contemporary architecture? I'll get into that one. Uh, 
And then topology and typology is a term that we're just using as our own practice. And related to that, there's another very, very short, uh, uh, simple publication, just 80 pages uh, publication that we had uh, in, 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 in Korea. I don't know, uh, I don't think you can get it here because it's a Korean publisher. Uh, but there's there's a there's a event uh, on Friday, so if you're interested, in it, please come by. Uh, this is uh, uh, also a very uh, kind of a brief and simple research on the phenomena of soul, and I didn't really think that uh, these two are related research or or thoughts, but uh, as I was doing it, uh, I thought, oh, they're pretty much related. And it kind of, uh, the question narrows down to the, the, the title of tonight's lecture, What Remains After All. So when we think about uh, what re remains after all, probably this is type of a ruin that we can find from like uh, ancient Roman period uh, or those type of thing. As a, as a kind of a remaining architecture, right? And as we all know, we, we learn from the school that, okay, like concrete lasts whatever years and steel lasts whatever years, those things. And then of course, these, uh, these uh, uh, ancient ruins uh, last almost uh, forever, right? But as, as you know that uh, the, the modern buildings their 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 lifespan is not depend on the the lifespan of the structure but basically a life lifespan of the usage so what happens is that it's all, always uh, being demolished in in these ways when when i was a uh, an undergrad student i had a, a one night i uh, went out uh, for a drink with uh, with one of the architect uh, who was teaching the the studio, and I, I said, oh yeah, uh, uh, professor, uh, I I think uh, being an architect is a great thing to be because uh, you're you're designing something that will last forever. And then he says, forever. You, I I I wish my building lasts thirty years. Uh, that he his building doesn't even last thirty years, so I don't know oh, what you guys think, but uh, that's something that I think I also had that in mind. the 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 reason why I had that in my mind, or my 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 professor uh, had his in his mind, is uh, maybe because of the. The, the 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 culture or the background that we had in 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 South Korea. So basically, uh, I don't know whether you've been to to Seoul, but this is Cheonggyecheon, uh, quite quite famous now, uh, in the 1960s. And that's uh, what you can see in uh, 2010. So obviously, the 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 change is dramatic, super dramatic. And obviously, it didn't come, uh, it didn't uh, transform from here to there at once. We even had another era of those uh, elevated highway era in, this, uh, in the 70s and 80s. So basically that transition happened within 50 years. And coming, coming down to my personal experience, this is this is the apartment uh, building that I used to uh, live in with my parents. So uh, this is the photo from uh, 1978. I was born in 77, so basically it's almost uh, as old as I am. And I, I, my parents still live there. And I, I, I mo we moved there in 1985 or something, right? So 40 years ago. So as you can see. It was like uh, this is like the the typical scene in the nineteen uh, seventies uh, in in Gangnam area, which is the southern part of the Han River. 
uh, you can you can see still the agriculture is going on with new apartments being built. And now uh, in uh, 2020, they're they're projecting to demolish almost a 5,000 unit apartment complex and rebuild a new one. So basically, that's what's happening. So when 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 you see those changes does it really matter how long the concrete lasts or reinforced concrete lasts that, that we we learn from from school right uh that that lifespan does doesn't mean uh much anymore but it's more about uh the the of course the real estate values and all uh, other other things so if, if if you're being raised in that culture, the 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 thing that you think about what is uh, architecture or how long uh, does an architecture uh, last become different. So uh, coming back to this photo, then uh, what are the fundamentals of architecture that could remain in 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 our society? especially in, in that uh, fast-paced, transforming city. Because uh, if we know that, that something that, uh, us, uh, if we can find out a fundamental structure that will last, that can last longer, no matter whether the, the usage changes or the owner changes or whatever, but still that, that structure can last in the city. That, that was kind of the, the question that I had. And speaking of the fundamentals, I don't know whether uh, you're familiar with the, the 10 years old uh, event, but uh, uh, Ram Cole has directed the, the, the Venice Biennale in 2014. And the theme was fundamentals. And then the exhibition was the, as you can see, elements of architecture that he his team researched all these uh, uh, elements like floor, wall, ceiling, roof, door, whatever. All these uh, elements that we know, uh, and then is a bit at uh, at the uh, Giardini. And uh, perhaps uh, that's that's right. That 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 we in architecture, this is something that we learn. And when when you design. A building; these are the elements that you have to uh, you have to consider and design, or or at some point, um, architecture was seen as a composition of these uh, typologies, right? So, okay, that that's fair enough. But perhaps that's uh, that's that's uh, more meaningful in this context, like uh, some kind of, uh, uh, for example, like this is Milano, but uh, like uh, this type of context where all these, uh, let's say, uh, the streetscape is defined by architecture, right? So you can see balconies, uh, windows, doors, and whatever those uh, elements that Rem was listing up. But again, where I grew up is different. That's the typical streetscape in Seoul. You don't see any architecture there. There's, there are windows, there are doors, of course, but those are not exposed. So all these uh, other things are defining the, the, the streetscape. So again, I'm not, I'm not trying to, to, to uh, have, uh, make a clear cut between the east and west, but still, uh, trying to say that the 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 way how I see architecture uh, is a uh, cannot be the same as uh, as uh, some other uh, views. So basically, if 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 the the facade is the most important thing to to keep, so basically this is what remains, right? Probably you've seen these type of scene quite quite uh, often, right? So so you you put so much effort 
to 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 keep the the facade during the construction, right? But in in Seoul, uh, we we don't have the concept of facade, so only the structure remains. Uh, this is a, a pop up store uh, near my office, by the way. So basically, as you can see, you you just take out all the things, and 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 uh, yeah, there's no kind of elements that left that are left in 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 this building so so if 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 uh, I'm, I'm i will i'll go into a little bit of uh let's say examples in so so if this is a church that uh as you can see the uh a gothic church uh when whenever you hear gothic church you kind of know how it looks like or or you know uh what elements there are and how, what languages they they use, right? But when it comes to Seoul, the turret is that kind of almost like temporary, a very light structure that's just uh, put on on top of a roof to define this building is a church. As a matter of fact, it's not even that the whole building that's a church. It's just one floor that's a church, and then the rest of uh, the floors are different other programs. So basically these are kind of uh, things that are happening. So what is church? That question, right? So uh, studying the phenomena of the, the streetscape or of the architecture in Seoul, this is something that I was saying, uh, I was thinking like, instead of elements of architecture, we can say accessories of architecture. They are very temporal and light and sometimes portable. Right, so uh, uh, I don't know whether you're familiar with Mr. Potato, but uh, when you see the Mr. Potato, right? So depending on what accessories that you 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 add uh, or you put, the, the the character changes. So it's not the actual potato that defines, but actually the accessories that defines the 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 character. It's similar to that. So that. Accessories book uh, has all these uh, examples. Let me just go through a uh, couple of interesting ideas. So, uh, for example, like um, uh, th there are also a lot of uh, freight elevators in in New York, and uh, but uh, as an architect, when you are, when you are asked uh, to convert a building to something like uh let's say industrial uh program right then and then let's say you, you need a freight elevator or some loading zone right if we think about oh well, how much area we do we need for freight elevators or loading zone type of thing but in so what's happening is oh let's just cut out the the, the facade and then have a a ladder truck to 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 put the Put the cargos, so, so yeah. I mean, why do you even uh, think that much, right? You can just cut out the building, right? So again, because we don't have a concept of keeping the facade, so the facade is some. As you can see, facade doesn't remain here, right? And what about uh, what about the canopy? So this is the uh, a printing uh, company, and when the forklift brings in the 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 package, you have to know that the package will not hit the door jam. So again, if you're an architect, you do many things. Like you can put a sensor, you can you can even uh, make the 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 door way higher than, uh, way taller than uh, the forklift. But basically what they do is just putting like a very simple uh, canopy design. I don't even know whether it can be called design, but I, I think it, it, it is very clever that with all these PVC pipes, so if the package hits the PVC pipe, then you know that it won't go through the, the door jam. But at the same time, even if it hits, the package will not get uh, harmed because it's light enough, right? So all these accessories, or even even the transformer, if 
depending, I mean, if, if you have a printing uh, company or a printing shop, you need to have a constant uh, uh, electricity, which means that you have to have your own transformers, and they are all, oh, well, let's just put it, on, put it on, the, on the roof, right? So it's not about the architecture, it's about all these accessories that are attached. And when this building is transformed into, let's say, a cafe or something else, then they'll just take it out. So again, uh, what defines the building and what remains? And obviously, you probably you've seen this uh, this scene a lot in 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 in, uh, in Korea. That okay the. Is there even a facade, or uh, does it even matter? Because all these, all these, let's say, uh, uh, stores might change within a year or two, right? So, so there's a limitation that architecture can uh, can correspond to the changes of the programs or changes of the use. Then the w one of the easiest way to uh, reveal the program is all these uh, signs or signifiers, right? So that's the that's what's being attached to the buildings. What about the cultural language? Again, uh, like uh, like many other cultures uh, in in Korea, we also do have a lot of uh, kind of uh, uh, efforts. Uh, architects put a lot of efforts how to uh, translate uh, the traditional language into more modern or contemporary way. So that's not my project, but something like that, right? So uh, sometimes it's more uh, literal, sometimes it's very uh, metaphoric or whatsoever, right? But then when you go out, you just put the, the tile roof uh, on, the, on the facade to show that it's a very authentic, traditional restaurant. I don't know whether you, ha you have that in, in New Jersey or, or Manhattan, but still. So when, when architects uh, think too much, that's what's happening in, the, in, the, in, in, in real life. So, so it, it's not only about the, 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 the Korean style, but something like that. We can create like a whole global streetscape uh, if we like, right? So it doesn't matter. So architecture doesn't matter anymore. So it's just those attachment that matters. So like, look at that, that bakery, like looks like a, a corner <laughs> store in, in France, right? But basically they, they just uh, painted it uh, with some kind of uh, attached, uh, the uh, the the window jams right and uh probably some koreans will will know what this building is do you, do you know oh you don't know can you guess what this building is for bank very close very close very close so as as you can see, uh, this is quite a famous building, by the way. Not as a building, but as a as a store. And it looks like a bank, of course. Uh, and uh, as you may know, uh, we didn't have any neoclassical era in 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 Korea, which means this is like all fake, uh, let's say, uh, style that was built in two thousands. The backside of that is that all the pipes, uh, where all the cash goes. No, no, not really. That's the, the barbecue duck. So basically, that's the rear facade of this building. So when when you see the the front part or the major part of the building, yeah, it looks like a bank or it looks like an, some authentic building whatever, but then the actual program is defined by these series of ducts that are kind of hidden on the, on the rear facade, but that's the real, uh, real reality of this building. And this is not even a building that 
they transformed a bank to a barbecue place, but they actually built the building for a barbecue place, right? So it's kind of like you can change or you can differentiate a style from the 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 the, the, the program, right? So so then again, the the question is what the defines the functions of a building is it architectural elements or accessories at least in Seoul it's it's quite an uh, interesting questions so so perhaps this is kind of a architectural streetscape that architects want to see but the reality is something like this in Seoul so this is again uh, one of the, let's say, uh, famous um, cafes in, in my area. Of course, used to be a used to be a, a factory. Then, uh, if if we can always attach and detach these accessories depending on our need, right? Then is this uh, the 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 kind of a uh, uh, domino system. That's the ultimate system of uh, of of the architecture. What what can we provide if if we accept the fact that all these of in in the fast paced uh, change city architecture doesn't cannot really uh, respond to these uh, changes. Then what is our role or or what what can we provide? Then it goes to the the uh, second uh, book the about the topology and typology. So again, then is this the ultimate system that let's say uh, like Le Corbusier insisted that okay uh, you have this system for uh, fast construction or and mass construction, and you can do whatever you can you can. You can put the walls wherever you want. You can put facade whatever you want, right? And are we living in a the in that kind of realm still? As you can see from that diagram, obviously uh, you you all learn Gobuzier's uh, kind of uh, idea of this uh, golden ratio, like how the facade can be designed that way, that way, that way. So basically the freedom of facade is not about the horizontal window but basically he 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 gave us that freedom to to make all these different uh facade system like these days it can be like a digital facade or whatever those it can even be curtain walls so basically uh we're still living in that modern uh let's say uh or modernist realm in a way that we are almost designing the 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 outer surface only but if that's not the case right what type of architecture can go beyond the modernism so basically challenging that challenging that idea and if we challenge that idea can we say there's a contemporarism so as you know, the, the modernism is a language. So the modern period is a, kind of a certain uh, uh, a period in history. And, and also the, the word modern didn't, I mean, uh, we, we still use uh, the modern as a term to, to explain the, 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 uh, the present time, right? When you, when you go to uh, like a design store, oh, it's it's very modern. That means uh, it's very uh, contemporary, right? But when we say modernism, it it means a certain language, right? We we don't we don't see this. Uh, let's say um, uh, 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 Tom Main's uh, building and say, oh, that's uh, so modernist uh, building. We don't say that, right? So modernism is a language. In that sense. Can we say contemporism? That was a question. I, I'm not saying that we, we should or we, we can, but like uh, when when uh, Rafael and I 
first formed our, our company and always tried to, to, to see how can we go beyond the modernism. And then that question kind of led us to question, oh, then is there a, a contemporism just as the modernism existed? So we, we start to kind of uh, research more contemporary projects and uh, uh, to see how they are related to uh, or they're uh, sitting on the lineage of uh, the architectural history. That's something that, that, that we, we did uh, most of the times. And be because we, we wanted to tackle what type of architecture can be uh, considered as contemporary architecture, right? Then, of course, uh, we had to uh, touch uh, Tony Bittler's the third typology, uh, rest in peace, uh, passed away last month. But the, he, he, he's, uh, he's, uh, his essay, the third typology, I think is one of the most influential uh, essays in, uh, in, in architectural history. And I think we are all under that influence. So basically, in, in this essay, he, he basically mentions three typologies. Uh, one is, of course, uh, of uh, more of uh, elements, I would say. Like when uh, either Ledger or Durang uh, was talking about how, as I briefly mentioned before, how our architecture can be composed with all these elements. Luc Goldbouzier, uh, argued that, uh, that uh, I mean, he didn't argue the second typology, but uh, Wittler, uh was saying that, oh, uh, the, the system itself uh, can be uh, one of the typology. And then the third typology, obviously, the famous uh, typology that's more related to the forms of a building. So we, we tried to tackle all these uh, three typologies to see whether we can find a certain, uh, let's say, efforts uh, from the contemporary architects. So uh, before going to the form first, we, we, uh, we thought about this idea of uh, topology. We, we borrowed that term from mathematics. Uh, I don't know whether you're familiar with that term, but basically uh, it's this one that, uh, you know how mathematicians are, they're, they're crazily genius, right? They're, they're crazy people. That they, they, they prove how our space is formed uh, through, through numbers, basically. So what they are arguing is that, let's say a donut is the same topology as a milk cup because it's not cut, it's just being deformed, right? It's not bonded or it's not cut. So as long as, uh, as, long as uh, that deformation stays with any cuts or uh, bonding, then it's the same topology. And then same topology means it's the same spatial uh, quality, basically. That's kind of the idea, basic idea of topology. And I don't actually know deeper than that. Uh, I'm not a mathematician, fortunately. So basically, uh, we, we thought that's a very uh, important concept to understand how our building uh, or the, the presence of, the, of our architecture uh, relates to the absence uh, of the context. So uh, basically, uh, then it, uh, it, I mean, as Fiddler was also mentioned, and also Moneo, uh, that it goes to the, the argument of autonomous form. Like, uh, like Kaufman uh, mentioned in his book uh, that uh, Ludo, of course, uh, is considered as a neoclassical architect. But when we think about uh, or, or when we start to get rid of all these ornaments that, that he had, it becomes a pure form. And then that pure form means something as a form, right? Not as uh, some kind of a program or whatever, right? Or not even a, a neoclassical language. So basically that, that, that 
the 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 idea of Thomas Nuss form was always there. It was not only in the 1960s when when Alderosis and all these uh, people brought up again, but basically all the idea was always there somehow. And uh, and, and something like this uh, alphabet uh, house architectural alphabet uh, by Steingruber that. Uh, it's just a sketch, right? But but basically, like uh, you see, I mean, this is like a almost like a I don't know, like a a, a child's uh, play, right? Okay, uh, I I have a I have a I I, I draw a house uh, that looks like a alphabet B, right? But I mean, it's like a very childish play. But then when we think about it as a like a topological way, right? So basically. The, the B cannot be the same as C if we think about the deformation, right? Probably E and F uh, could be similar, right? But basically what this is saying is that uh, the, the house doesn't need to have a certain kind of form. A form can house a house, basically. I don't know what that makes sense. So basically that's the idea of autonomous form, and obviously uh, there are some kind of uh, contemporary architects uh, projects that uh, uh, reflects or at, at least implies the idea of uh, autonomous form. And obviously the famous one is Thomas Nuss Form, right? Yeah. 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 Design studio that, that uh, as far as I know, uh, a lot of people are not in the house in front of the of course, you have to be interested in this, but basically, the form is almost given to the forms that are taken out from the So, I don't know about uh, the, the, the education uh, here, but in many cases, these days, uh, the form is not given as a common form, but you know, when you can see it, uh, you can Thank you. 
So, so the actual uh, structural view as well as the issue of student giving the beliefs as well. She does not always uh, be uh, considered uh, as, uh, as a fundamental uh, element that, that, that we find, but more, more maybe can be function as somewhat common to the world. So, so obviously, we, we, we always challenge these things and we give so much competition and so on and so on and so on. But I'm not sure if you can do it because I think it's better to see much more technical challenges. So, basically, uh, the, the first idea of uh, how can the form be removed and all the cultural functions are. of these objects instead of instead of uh, 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 differentiating uh, columns from other elements right uh, this is the down headquarter office building by net studies so so basically this is uh, uh, this looks very uh, how to say mm, uh, like a form making uh, Project, but when when you look into the system of it, this is very simple system. So basically, uh, have five different structural uh, objects and then uh, compose them into a form. What about the walls, right? Like uh, like the domino system uh, suggests us to have a freedom of walls, so that it, it, it shouldn't carry any loads right so that we can have open plan or or, or freedom of uh, designing the plan but basically uh the other way around that uh christian Keres uh, one wall house that that all the all the loads can be carried onto this wall and that doesn't necessarily mean that it has to be like a masonry structure that was built like hundreds of years ago, but it still can be uh, uh, can have some some play in design, right? Depending on the program, whatever. So so basically, the, those those are kind of uh, I don't know whether the those architects really meant to 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 go beyond the 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 domino system or modern system, but still, I think that that those are some sort of a contemporary phenomena that I uh, that we read um, that architects have, like or or, or these uh, spatial core, <clears throat> as I said, it, the domino system uh, just proposed uh, like a very functional vertical uh, circulation, but then a lot of architects these days try to make vertical uh, circulation systems as part of either space part of structural uh, component 
So basically, th this uh, project uh, by Dutelin Redic Architect, that core system is the only kind of a vertical, let's say, uh, structural system that they have. And others are all uh, uh, spanning from, from the core. So basically, can we then, uh, can we say that the vertical circulation is not a uh, structural system or can they be combined, right? Or obese columns, like again, Toyoito, uh, when, when you read, uh, he's, I, I think I read it uh, from his El Kroki uh, beginning interview, that uh, when, when he designed this uh, Sendai Media Tech uh, in 2000, he really uh, thought a lot about what is the uh, new architecture in, in 21st century, because it was turning century. A lot of architects really thought about that. Uh, I briefly showed you the OMA CCTV tower. He interviewed exactly the same way that, oh, oh what, what is the 21st century high-rise building, basically? So in that turning century, a lot, of, uh, a lot of contemporary architects really thought about what is new, basically. And that, I think, implies uh, how do we go beyond the, the, the modern language? So basically, if you if you analyze the Sendai MediaTek, that's very modern. So basically, they use the the modern grid system so that that they have, and then they somewhat uh, have a little bit of displacement of those columns, and then make this. I mean, obese column is not a not a, a term that Toyoto uses. It's just our term, right? So basically, then they make uh, kind of a let's say new. They give new function to the column on top of the structural uh, uh, elements. So basically, like oh, what, what we are trying to do is uh, this to, in, through topology and typology, we're trying to see how the how the form and this uh, structural system, including the, the the aesthetic elements, how how they can be synthesized together. If we say there's a contemporary architecture can be defined, uh, uh, can contemporary, contemporary architecture can be defined, uh, that's kind of an argument that, okay, is there a synthesized uh, form and uh, system in, in contemporary architecture? So again, I mean, we, we, we do a series of competition every year, but but I'll show you just uh, a couple of uh, things uh, today. Uh, this was a, a competition entry uh, in 2012, almost uh, 11 years ago. This this one was uh, uh, I forgot the name of the architect, but basically it's 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 all already built, nice project. But what we were trying to do there was basically uh, trying to make a form again uh it may not be a library in 50 or 100 years but it's a, a form that goes well with the context and the system or the structural system makes that form that's basically the idea so basically uh, I, I'm not going through all these uh, uh, reasons why we, we lifted that up, whatever, but ba basically was the, there was an access, urban access that, that we wanted to open that up. Uh, so basically, the lifting that up was one of the first kind of uh, decision that we made, and then the height was uh, following the context, whatever. But then, as you can see from the, the, uh, the, the concept, uh, model. This is basically a name card that, that, that you fold it, right? Then you, if you uh, lose your your hand, then you uh, go back to the original shape, right? Then 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 we just put a tape that's uh, a tensile uh, structure, right? Then it, it can stand with that form. So basically, that was the idea. So. So basically, the idea was, how, how, can the form uh, 
be defined by the system as well, right? So basically, that's kind of the uh, the idea that, that that we made, and obviously we didn't win, but but still, uh, that's kind of uh, interesting way of spanning that 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 long uh, floor with the tensile structure that's making the the form. Another one is uh, Gwangju uh, National Library, which we did a couple of years ago. Both of them are library, and 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 here as well, uh, how this this form uh, can be synthesized with the uh, with the system, and this is kind of a art piece that inspired us uh, uh, by uh, Lee Gonyoung. That as you can see, there are four points with the real wood and branch and there's a very imbalanced points right but then somehow it's kind of balancing right so we thought oh that's that's quite interesting so basically instead of instead of trying to have a more rationalized uh column system we said that, oh let's try to make that imbalance uh point and then flip them and then uh make make that into into the library. So, but basically, uh, the the bigger idea was this uh, kind of a, a plinth that continues from the context and then uh, then uh, dissolves into uh, to to the context as well. And then the upper side was just a flip of it. Um, but basically, uh, it from 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 the outside, it looks like a, just a boxy building, but, but then the whole idea again was how this can, can, uh, can kind of uh, be dissolved into the context so that, uh, so that it can be anything later, right? Because uh, this is what what's saying is that a small library, uh, there, there are 2,400 small libraries that are closed down or, 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 or yeah, closed down in, in the past three and a half years, basically, in, in Korea. So when, when you think about libraries, you think, oh, yeah, we, we're going to have a library that, that will remain hundreds of years. But no, 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 no. What, what's happening is that we are all, all already closing down many libraries. So then, then, I'm not a I'm not a politician, right? So I cannot kind of decide uh, those decisions. But if the building or building structure can be used uh, for something else easily, right? Then maybe they don't have to uh, get rid of the libraries. I mean, they will get rid of the libraries, but the 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 the, the structure will, will will remain there, right? So this is the last project that I'm going to share, which uh, they're in the, uh, not actually under construction, but they're in the final phase of uh, contracting the contract. So uh, this is uh, the competition that we won uh, some years ago. Uh, this is a huge project. This is, a, uh, the floor area is almost like uh, six, 600,000 square foot. Uh, six, 60,000 square meter. So it's a huge one. And as you can see, this is uh, within, a, within a, a very uh, kind of a dense old town. Uh, it's a city hall project. So this is the, uh, the old city of, uh, of Suncheon, and this is the the city hall that they're using. Obviously, it started with this building, but then obviously they, they attached the, or they extended the building that way, and then that's parking. And the idea was to demolish that whole red area to build a new city hall. By the way, that's, that was not my idea. <laughs> I'm not that cruel. The, the they, they had like a, 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 a series of meetings and, uh, and, 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 and hearings and everything. And then the, the citizens uh, decided to have their uh, new city hall 
in this area and then uh, which had to demolish all these things. One of the reasons why they decided to do that is because their, their, their uh, city center, the old city, was struggling, just as many other cities did uh, in, in the U.S., maybe probably in the, in the 80s and 90s. Right? Always the downtown always, uh, uh, always struggle when the city expands. So basically, they, they, they need some, some kind of a precision to, to this area. So they said that, oh, instead of having the city hall somewhere else and boost that area up, we are going to have the city hall, a new city hall here, so that that, that new project can revitalize the whole uh, neighborhood, which is good. And, but at the same time, there, there's a sacrifice that they have to demolish a couple of blocks. So that's what's happening. And obviously, these buildings are all gone, right? And as you can see, this building was not even uh, in use. They, they, they got the, the final, uh, what, what do you call it, the, the, the final... Uh, uh, what do you call that in English? Uh, uh, that you get the, the the approval for occupancy. Yeah, they got the final certificate of occupancy, and then got demolished. <laughs> so obviously there there are buildings that was that are like fifty years old or sixty years old, but there are buildings that's like a week year old, right? And then they're they're demolishing it. So basically, I, I, I feel sorry about that, but at the same time, that, that was the project, right? Uh, and that was the, uh, the, the basis of the competition. So basically, the existing city, while the existing city hall uh, remains there, the other buildings uh, had to be demolished, and the new city hall will be built, and then that will be demolished, and then they will become the park and then we'll have a connection. That was the whole kind of uh, phasing of the, uh, of the, the, the project. So, so when, 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 when we dealt with that, at least, okay, at least I, I understand that our project uh, brings in some of uh, uh, quite many uh, demolitions with us. But at the same time, at least this new project should be adjustable enough that later, like uh, 30 or 50 years later, they don't need to demolish them. They just reuse them. That was kind of the idea. So basically, that was uh, the idea of the original uh, uh, competition. And those are kind of, 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 of course, those uh, little uh, parcels or, uh, or or building footprints, uh, we we remain them as a as a landscape uh, patterns. Obviously, that's that's gone now. But but at least in the competition, that was the idea. And 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 here we try to make many kind of uh, small courtyards because, again, uh, making the the uh, good open spaces are the ways how the buildings can keep their own st structure in, 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 in the future. And, and then th there's a kind of a, a, a platform on the third floor uh, that connects everything. So again, as I said, we, we really focus on designing the, the open spaces because we know that they that will remain. The facade may not remain. Though, so, I mean, not that I'm saying that we, we didn't really care about the facade. I mean, we, 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 G1 work on this project, by the way. We, we, we put a lot of effort and we are putting a lot of uh, money on that one. But at the same time, we also accept the fact that they might change in the future. But at the same time, we're hoping that the way how these open spaces are formed by this uh, architecture 
will remain in the future uh, so that this uh, project basically have a better relationship with with the existing condition of the city so that it's flexible enough and then it 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 kind of dissolves into into the context so that that later if something happens even when something happens that the the way how this is forming the open spaces and the, the how this uh, these uh, blocks are forming uh, the city with along with other buildings should remain uh, as is okay I think that was it I hope you enjoyed it thank you this is coming through it's coming through thank you Dongwu that was great to see and great to hear and, and wonderful to think about so maybe just uh, a few thoughts questions to kind of kick off a conversation then I'll open it up to everybody here and see what you have to to ask Dongwu and to talk about but um so one of the things that that I think just to start it off is the the link between the first part of the lecture, the accessories, and the second part about the topology and typology. Um, I found it fascinating in the ways in which at the core of it is still the domino diagram, uh, the Corbusian Maison domino, which was so crucial for so much of modern architecture and then had its way in which it spread worldwide uh, for better and worse, for good things and bad things that came out of that sort of, um, let's say, type in, in its sort of implications for modern architecture. Um, now, one of the main ways in which it kind of entered into, if we stretch contemporary discourse into postmodernism, was its relationship to Robert Venturi's and, and Denise Scott Brown's uh, decorated shed and, and its manners for taking over the free facade as, as a moment in which there could be uh, illusions of a classical or a traditional architecture and allusions to a popular um, vocabulary of design, and that that could then clad that more or less modernist shed to form different languages of architecture to the city, to the street, to the suburban context, urban context, it didn't matter, it had that kind of flexibility. So one of the things that I found fascinating about the accessories start to, to the talk was a mutation or transformation of, of that kind of postmodernism into something that had a vernacular specificity to the use of a very strange way in which functional requirements required an absurd response and that this could then lead to all the examples you showed and the examples you showed are are fascinating for both the ways in which you can see how they needed that sort of structural type as their root they were not coming from a random situation they were coming from economies and functional needs and elevator shafts and exhaust for mechanical systems and everything else but they were not using them in the ways in which they could have then been thought through in a in a kind of uh british high-tech manner they were not used in the ways in which a kind of uh digital simulation signage of, of a certain kind of ilk that happened in the 1990s would have done it. it it had a totally different funk to it and actually it felt very contemporary to me in in, in a way and and so i i, I guess it, and, and we can tie that then into the the book we're, we're here to talk about and also to the the work you're using through diagrams and into your own work but just Maybe for a second, I wanted to think about or dwell on, on your obvious, I think, an interest and a fascination with those events in those ways in which architecture happens in, in a manner that's somehow out of control, but out of control in a scaffolding that is set forward by an architect at some point in the past, in the ways in which those also extend and transform the life of a building into things it could have never predicted. Because I don't think it's totally a negative critique of that. There's, there's, I think, some kind of joy and almost humor and, and pleasure 
in those kinds of unexpected odd encounters. Is that maybe something we could start yeah. to talk about? I mean, um, yeah, like like you say, like you said uh, that I mean, you've been there, so you 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 know the the, the scene. And for example, like uh, if we if we translate those uh, those accessories into an architectural element or architectural design, uh, perhaps it's like Pompidou, right? So okay, this guy is just putting all the ducks uh, for barbecue uh, exhaust, but then if oh, the architects will think that oh, can we can we actually use that as a design feature and then make into something else, right? So then it's a Pompidou. That, that, uh, at some point, that was kind of a, a, kind of a, a, a question that I also had. Can, uh, can we learn all these uh, things and try to have kind of a, a in a way, better a way of designing uh, or implementing those ideas into design? That was kind of... Uh, some kind of uh, question that I had at some point, but but uh, very quickly my qu uh, question move on to uh, onto this uh, more kind of uh, fundamental idea of okay why wh why is wh I mean this is changing so fast anyways so and. It's not about design, right? They're not changing because of the design. They're changing because of all these uh, different needs or different programs or different use or different owners and, and all these things. Then, okay, what's remaining behind those changes? That my question kind of led to that question. Because I thought that, that that's a uh, more fundamental question to ask because, okay, maybe a great, a good, a great architects can use, let's say, a crazy uh, sign ideas into architectural components and then make it into a, a great design project. I will appreciate that, but still, that that effort doesn't answer to my question. Though, okay, but but I still saw. A very good, uh, 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 a very good uh, design building being demolished in in Korea all the time. I forgot the, the name of the architect, but um, there's a Mexican architect, uh, uh, not not Baragan, but uh, one generation under. But anyways, his project was demolished some years ago in in Korea. Yeah, 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 Rigoretta. See, doesn't matter. <laughs> doesn't matter who designed it. Doesn't matter how 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 well designed it is. We just demolished it, right? So, being <laughs> grown up in that culture, maybe I'm too skeptical. But 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 that's what I've seen in my culture. So so that's why I. I was trying to ask more fundamental question of what remains. Yeah. Yeah, there seems to be also the suggestion within um, several of the, the typologies in terms of their topological transformation of elements, where if instead of having a hyperly divided segmentation of the elements into their pure forms, if they somehow are mutant versions of double functions, so the toyuito columns get large enough to swallow the ducts and become plenums for the movement of people in air uh, as they funnel through Sendai Mediatek, or the slab is no longer just a slab that is there to stack and, and repeat, but a slab is there that is something that is building and, and altering and relating to the ground through ramps, through folds, through other kinds of manipulations. Um, but the thing I, I'm thinking about, and it's a, this is an open-ended, uh, but just kind of an, an honest question is, 
does the mutation of those elements into multiple hybrids of things that are no longer easily classified as a singular typology of, of structure versus slab versus enclosure, does that make them more resistant to the processes of demolition and change and transformation that you're talking about? Is, is it in that? Is it in a kind of form of finding a resistance to that? Or is it finding a way to problematize the singularity of elements that, that makes them thus because one argument would maybe be like, no, just accelerate the, the transformations. This is what's happening and this is what's going on. And we have to find our, our way to move at that rate in our way to move with those desires and our ways to become architects within that. And then another, another stance is to find moments to resist it, to refuse it. And maybe there's a third way. And maybe it's a third way where built into the architecture, there's, um, enough kind of, let's say, richness and complexity that when those transformations come unavoidably, they, they come in a different manner than, than how we're seeing today. Is it, is it something along those lines or? Yeah, I mean, uh, so I, 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 think, I, I think that's a uh, that's very uh, uh, critical question uh, in, in, in related to, to what I'm thinking. And which is why I still think uh, domino system works. Uh, I'm not necessarily saying that the, the domino system w w will have or we can have a kind of a way more flexible kind of a system that can that can uh, replace the domino system. But at the same time, uh, I think uh, maybe I'm too naive. But uh, uh, I think a certain forms can be uh, can be built with the synthesizing of a new kind of system uh, other than the domino system. So if that stays that the form and the system, let's say there's a form and system that's super well synthesized. So, so if you get rid of the system, the form collapse, let's say. If we have that, if we can agree that, 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 that there is something, there can be something like that, and, and, and we also agree that the form has kind of its own autonomous uh, meaning to the context, Perhaps it can last a bit longer. So, uh, I mean, it's not necessarily exactly uh, uh, the same way, but uh, like, like the, the Roman ruins, if we take out one column, it will collapse, basically. So there's a certain kind of, a, that's not really about the form, but still there's a certain kind of, uh, uh, a thing that can be synthesized between the form and the, 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 the system. So that's be because I think that, uh, that uh, how far can we go with the domino system basically? That's another question, right? I, I think we're just repeating and repeating again and again and again, right? So if I'm not necessarily saying that we should go beyond the modernism, but, but as we always saw, even the postmodernism, con constructivism, uh, or uh, the, no, the constructivism, uh, there are always efforts to go beyond the modernism. So if, if we accept that, uh, if we admit that those efforts, perhaps uh, a lot of architects are trying to go beyond and then that this is one way to think about it, I think, yeah. I think maybe one of the, one of the examples we showed where I can see this starting to be an incredibly provocative and successful sort of step in this is the, is the City Hall project. Because it, it has, 
a collection of many towers, a collection of an elevated plinth that's operating as a mat building that's unifying multiple blocks and even crossing over streets, and then a ground that is passing through a series of loosely and freely collected courtyards of, of landscaped and, and, and planted spaces. And when you said that you didn't care what happened to the towers, or maybe you didn't care, maybe you didn't say that, but you said that maybe the towers would get altered or destroyed or, or their facades would be redesigned. And I was thinking, well, then that's a pretty provocative stance because therefore the identity of the city hall it is no longer placed on the image of the building and it's, and it's sort of uh, elevated view from afar, but it's instead placed on the structure of a relationship to the context of the city. It's probably closest to the third typology that, that Tony Vidler was talking about, that relationship to, to urban form, that relationship to context, which is so necessary for uh, so many things we do as, as architects. As, as you said, at, at one moment, all architecture has a site that it's in some relationship to. And it made me want to imagine re-imaging or re-rendering your project. And maybe this is a good Thing for proud to do or maybe a studio for proud to run where you start to image it 20 years 30 years 50 years from now what remains it's all the toxins yeah. I know too. <laughs> yeah what what changes and then what remains and that would be something that would almost be a kind of um speculative project about uh where the kind of robustness works within that hybridity of many of the topological typologies and their transformations that you're talking about and by the way, we use domino system there. Yeah. So, so, so again, like uh, the synthesizing the, the format system is something that we, we, we try to explore. We always uh, try to experiment. We, we try to push the boundary, but at the same time, there are moments that, okay, we just use domino system because yeah, it's the way how, how it goes, right? So, but at the same time, like you say that, but at least the form is kind of uh, touching that idea of uh, the third typology, how the, the form can can last longer in, in the context, yeah. Thoughts, questions from the audience? Are there things you'd like to ask Dong Wu? Maybe one uh, quick question I just came into my mind was something related to sustainability, more the environmental aspect rather than the formal or the structural. Because I think today, like the environmental, the sustainable aspect of building is really crucial in thinking about how, like how we should design, like in terms of how do we choose materiality or how do we think about the construction method. Uh, and I just also relating to the thoughts on accessories, like what reminded me was not just Korea, but also maybe in New York City, what happens is we use old buildings. We use it in different purposes, different ways. And as the time changes, these systems inside the building requires different, uh, more technical stuff to come in, such as like where a building didn't have an AC, we need to cool the building, AC comes in, we need ducts, we need ventilation pipes. So these like more of the technical accessories come in. And I just, thought how do we think about like these kind of more of the technical or more of the stuff that we tend to not really think of when designing in order to maybe design better buildings i guess i didn't know if i framed that correctly but yeah yeah i mean um so I, I I think I mean I, to be honest I'm not I'm not a super kind of uh, expert in sustainability in a sense that we we define that term nowadays 
Not that I'm saying that I don't care about sustainability. I do care about it in my own way, I think. And this question is related to that. Because I, as you uh, probably uh, did catch, that I do care about how a building can last longer. And in architecture, I think that's the, the, the most fundamental kind of a question about how sustainable a building is instead of what's the lead point of that building. I mean, we, 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 can, we can have lead platinum, but if the building is demolished in 30 years and being rebuilt in a new one, I don't think that's a sustainable at all. So the, the, the time frame that we, we, we should think about in architecture and in city should be different. It's not about, oh, this year, next year, or within 10 years. It has to be 50, 100, 500 years. Is the building sustainable in next 100 years? That, that's a question that we should ask. Or at least, at least the, the attitude we should have. Even though there wouldn't be any points uh, to, to, to make a building to, to get whatever award. But, so that's one thing. And I think, the, I think uh, especially, uh, let's, say, let's say adaptive reuse as a, a big umbrella. I think that's, uh, that's very crucial because, uh, because when, when you, when you uh, see all these, uh, let's say, there are pros and cons of adaptive reuse, of course. And then if you look up all the cons of adaptive reuse is because of those things. That, oh, like, uh, uh, we couldn't, we couldn't uh, have uh, proper ADA uh, uh, requirements here, or we couldn't have whatever those things here because of those restrictions or limitations, right? So, so, so I, I think that's still a, a, a very big hurdle uh, that, uh, that can, a, can a building be, let's say, uh, enough qualified in 100 years when we are going to have different uh, standard of building, different levels of, or different qualities of, of, of spaces, whatever. So I think that's still a very big question. But at the same time, I do believe the advancement of technologies that, that, that things are solved in m many different ways, I think. So I think that's still a, a question and uh, whether it's uh, introvert adaptive reuse or extrovert adaptive reuse, but in, or the, 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 the combination of them, but I think that, that as long as the structure remains, I think that there are ways to, to, to uh, respond to those new requirements, I'll say, yeah. Yeah, to not have uh, the question of sustainability somehow be an accessory that's applied to a building, which often happens. A few solar panels and a green roof and the building is labeled sustainable and really the entire structure in all of its material histories and development within it is unsustainable. So maybe one of the other ways to think about something like the, the City Hall project or some of the other proposals is multiple temporalities for the life cycles and spans of the materials we use and to take those into account as ways in which to reuse uh, transform and uh, have other elements remain in a much longer permanent state and that kind of adaptability and flexibility seems to have much more possibilities for some responsible way of kind of working through buildings today that you wouldn't tear down those things. If you had control of the site, 
your site, your strategy for that project has the echo of not tearing down, but of regathering and somehow pulling them back into another expression of the fabric of the city. I, I think um, I, I can, I, I cannot say globally, but uh, one of the reasons why I also think that this is very important issue now in Korea is because uh, we, we hit the, 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 the ceiling in terms of economic growth. So basically, uh, now we have to think about how to reuse our built environment rather than how to build more. So. So something like uh, this is kind of the changing moment, uh, not only in terms of uh, economy, but also in terms of the, the, the paradigms of how we see our own built environment. So I had a question about like this fast paced demolition of buildings and like rebuilding. Um, I guess like, I think that like a big part that contributes to that um, consequence is how the general public perceives architecture and especially in Korea because um, the country's been through like fast paced development. It was a, a lot about like being efficient, um, making new buildings, um, and I think like that kind of like mindset of the general public contributes a lot to the continual like demolition of buildings, past buildings, and like building new buildings. Um, so how, I guess the question that I have is as an architect, like um, I guess as an architect, like do you think that we should be working along with these mindsets of the general public or like um, perceive our works to be something that could change how the people think um, or maybe that thought change could come naturally over time or yeah that, that was just a question that I, 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 I think that's a, that's a great question at which I al always um, also had uh, and I'll, I'll say my, 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 my thought always changes. Uh, at some point, I, I thought that, that, that oh, uh, those, uh, let's say, general public, whoever there is, oh, they're, they're, they're so uh, uh, illiterate. You know, that, oh, they don't know how precious an architecture is, and they don't know uh, the culture of architecture or whatever. But nowadays, I think, I mean, I mean, like, uh, like uh, Venturi and Scott Brown, I'm trying to learn from the phenomena that I see. I mean, why, why, why? I mean, uh, it, it's, e I mean, I also uh, say that uh, the fast pace uh, transformation, but it's easy to say everything is based ba uh, because of the uh, fast pace changing. But to be honest, I don't know whether it's because of that, um, whether the, the mentality that the, the, the Koreans have now is uh, formed uh, based on the, let's say, the, the last half century of the history, or is it cultural, or is it, I don't know. So uh, no matter what the reason is, we know the phenomenon. So now I'm thinking that, okay, it is what it is. And in that culture, what can I do? So instead of trying to enlighten the general public saying that, oh, we should think about that, which might be quite against to what, uh, let's say, the, the, the culture of the general public, but rather I, I try to reflect the, this fast paced movement and, uh, and, 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 and provide or, or design something that 
touches this question, then they will also accept it because it's not against to the, the fast pace changes because it, it, it accepts or it reflects. But at the same time, I do my own responsibility uh, as an architect. So, but then it goes to yeah, your point that then later, 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 then maybe even the general public will understand, oh, maybe we, we, we still want to change this, 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 whatever, but oh, maybe the, the structure, we, we should think about how, uh, or, or, or maybe those structures could be more valuable in the future, right? So, yeah, so uh, uh, in a way, I think architects should prove their, their thoughts through these, uh, let's say, uh, built works uh, after all, right? So yeah, I think that's, that's what I'll say. Any other thoughts, questions for Dong Wu? Um, I have a question in terms of uh, like this conflict between like culture around architecture. I'm just wondering who do you have this conversation with? Like there is this, uh, you know, you could have the conversation in academic uh, field or you could have this conversation in, in the actual working field. And I, I guess like when you bring that conversation to different demographics, how do they respond, I guess? in Korea? Uh, to be honest, I only uh, had chances to uh, communicate uh, within architecture field so far. Uh, one, because, uh, because as you can see, it, it's not easy to, to bring this, these uh, contents to general public. Who are not, uh, who are not, uh, let's see, who doesn't have a background knowledge in architecture? But that doesn't mean that it's not related to what uh, what they're thinking or or, or or their culture, which is my culture as well. But no, I mean, I just uh, didn't have much chance to, to talk about it with, let's say, for example, like client. Oh, no, I don't, I don't say that. I just do, uh, or I just uh, reflect my thoughts to the design without really uh, insisting that these are the, 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 my kind of the whole idea so that you have to accept this my idea. No, I, I, I mean, so which, which is why I, 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 I had a small talk uh, a few weeks ago with, uh, with some young architects and architecture students in Seoul that, that I'm not so much interested in like uh, showing all these, uh, let's say, architectural projects because those are something that I had a uh, conversation with my client. My client asked uh, me something to do something, and they paid me. So I mostly communicate with them to meet their purpose. Obviously, if you are a good architect, you want to kind of uh, reflect your own thoughts of architecture underneath of that project, but I don't necessarily think it should overwhelm the client's uh, needs or, or thoughts. Some architects can do, but uh, to be honest, I, I don't know whether that's, that's, a, that's a, uh, something that I want to do, but I just want to kind of put that underneath of that so that the client's so something like the, the developer's project that I briefly showed in Boston, that I don't have to explain how these deformations, whatever those things happens. I just have to show them, 
you know, you can have uh, a, a, a well-designed triple decker that doesn't cost more than other triple decker. And then once you have it, you can build so many different ones with the same uh, amount of, uh, let's say, uh, materials and uh, uh, money or whatever. That, that's what I said. Not more than that. So I think that's the kind of uh, the, the, the way how I communicate with uh, the client, general public, and architects. But, but if I had to offer, in terms of engaging other publics, you're actually doing something really quite interesting across the street from your office. Uh, you've, you, you've started a gallery, which is, in my mind, in, in a kind of lineage of storefront for art and architecture, which is a gallery that is an architecture gallery, but it's on the street, it's on the, it is a storefront, it's open to anyone passing by. And, and I think that's a kind of a, a really powerful and important form of engagement, because it doesn't have to come with an academic discourse. It comes with we're all here. We're on this. We're on. We're sharing this street. You look in here. What's that? That's pretty weird. Let's check it out. And so I, I, I love that you've done that. I think there's something really kind of crucial and fundamental about us finding other ways in which we engage the public and all sorts of ways in which that public begins to become part of the part of our cities and how and how crucial to all the questions and, and decisions that are being made. Yeah, I mean, so uh, uh, thanks for uh, mentioning about Tomanza. But yeah, you, uh, it's, it's right that you're right that uh, we're trying to have uh, Tomanza, which is a very small storefront gallery, uh, which we actually uh, 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 copied the storefront. <laughs> but by the way, uh, Kyung Park, who founded the storefront gallery, he's also a big fan of Tomanza. Uh, we, 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 we always try to uh, have kind of uh, communication with the public and also their engagement to, to our field. And that's kind of the, Atomanza is a, a, a bridging moment between the architectural field and the public. Because I, I always think that architecture should not, as I said, should not, architects should not be somebody who Things that they can enlighten the public. It's basically uh, two ways uh, interaction. They always have to be, I think. Any other thoughts? Yeah. Um, when you show this, the examples of different accessories that are used in Seoul, um, I w the first thing that came up to my mind was that, wait a minute, you don't need an architect to do that. Um, I guess you would need an architect to stamp on drawings and get permits. Um, but then, um, I guess my question is, since we acknowledge the fact that these accessories can be architectural elements um, in a city like Seoul, what is our position? Like, is it just fighting? Um, for the fact that we have to demolish these um, and then build a new project on the land? Or how do we play around with these accessories that um, engineers would know better than us? Uh, so, so basically those accessories are uh, the, the kind of uh, in, in, a, in a limbo basically, uh, that it goes beyond the architectural permit and it, they, most of them do not even need permits. Of course, not architect's permit, of course, but, uh, but even any type of permit, they don't need, right? So if, if uh, and even when you need, people don't get it. <laughs> and that's what's happening, right? So uh, I originally thought those are something uh, that have to be cleaned out to make our city more kind of, let's say, beautiful in a way. But basically, it's a beautification movement. But now, now I think the, the beauty of them is oh, when they are in limbo, that you cannot control them. Because, again, that comes out as a phenomenon, not as a 
that not as a design feature, not as a, 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 a control feature, not as a permitted way. And that's why it's so uh, viable, I think. Not necessarily saying that they are pretty or beautiful or whatever, but it is what it is. And now I'm just trying to accept that and uh, and my attitude or my stance is that 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 once we uh, we uh, ignore or or uh, overlook the the strength of that limbo moment, then I think we lose the dynamic of the city. Because the, the, the way how our city is made is through that, not through the architecture. I mean, I, mean, I shouldn't say that, but, but you know what I'm saying, right? right? So there's a lot of importance, uh, important dynamics in that little layer, I think, on top of the architecture. So unless somebody has a burning question they'd like to ask, I think we're kind of at our time to, to wrap things up. Thank you. So thank you, Dongwu. Thank you. Thank you, Mike, for having me. Thank you. Thank you very much.